Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to a new episode of Music in My Ears, the Nigerian Music uh, History Stories on podcast, coming out live from Anchor.fm. My name is Joseph Asipo, your usual anchor, your usual historian, your usual uh, curator of this very podcast, which is gradually becoming a grand premier music history podcast. So, uh, we have been basically telling stories around Nigerian music history of the time past, talking about the 70s, talking about the 80s, and we are still taking it gradually. Basically, we are still um, dwelling on the Afro-funk, psychedelic rock era of Nigerian music, trying to bring it to the understanding of those that were not born then, even though some of us were very young, um, we are just um, relying on uh, power of uh, recollection and trying to research into what really went down in the past based out of um, how do I put it based out on passion and the desire to pass on history in an oral way okay so we have uh, had so many bands on uh, on call on this uh, uh, on this podcast we ducked into some of the bands that made waves around the, around the country. And today, we are digging into another band. This band has been described as one of the best bands to come out from the Afro-Funk era. And they are equally described as an elitist band. I don't know what it means, but putting it together, I, I gather that those days, if you wanted to go and watch their concerts, you must have some good money in your pocket. And that is the band we are going to consider today. We will dig briefly into their history and see what really went down with them. You know, uh, the last episode we did was about um, the strangers of Oweri. You know, the strangers, uh, Bob Miguel led a band. Uh, Recollect uh, Bob Nigger and his band had some kind of affiliation with the military because we are still talking about the the pre and to maybe slightly post civil war, uh, Biafran civil war in Nigeria, where some of the bands were engaged by the military to bring entertainment. Um, coming to the end, end of the war, some of them transited to entertaining the public and you know trying to bring together the people once again that suffered so much loss both in human and material properties around the southeastern part of Nigeria. As a matter of fact, one of the bands I could recall it, one of the, 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 the band members of those areas said that a, a city like Enugu was a ghost town when they, when they came back after the war and it was part of their efforts uh, playing around the, the town, the city, that people that made people to come out from their hiding places to build up the city once again. So that was um, the much the bands of that era contributed in rebuilding the southeast that was seriously ravaged by the civil war. Without much ado, today we are talking about one world ban. One world ban. Like I said, they were considered an elitist band. And if you recall it, we talked about the strangers. Uh, One World Band basically is an offshoot of the strangers. Or can I say the stranger band of strangers? Incidentally, strangers did not um, have, uh, in terms of discography, uh, they did not have much. But One World, on the other hand, stayed much longer, releasing several, almost five albums or thereabouts, whereas uh, Strangers just had an album and few um, singles, or two or three singles released. But One World took their time in the market, uh, released several albums, mainly on the EMI, the Nigerian EMI, EMI, the multinational record label, scoring hit and becoming a fan's favorite right across the country, you know. So, you can imagine Bob Miga with his band. Uh, we don't know what happened, probably. 
money issues, or whatever, uh, suddenly you discover that five of your band members are no longer with you. You know? So some people believe that that was uh, what led to the demise of the strangers as a band and also the rise of one world. So you could uh, imagine uh, people like uh, Annie Hoffman, Samuel Ifa Yeze, uh, Samuel Nke Matthew, Gabo Zani, and the rest uh, jumping ship from uh, the strangers, pulling out like five core members of the band to form a new band. That could have led to the strangers going down and probably uh, led to the late Bob Miga relocating to London or to UK, uh, where he stayed on for a while and eventually um, passed on. So today, uh, we are going to just look at one world and see what we're all about. So before we continue, we'd like to bring in the music of uh, one world right now. And the song we are going to feature right now is Look at the World by One World. So stay tuned. We will come back. We rush things up and, you know, just uh, give the brief about this band we are talking about today. Thank you so much for staying on. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome back. That was the Look at the World by One World Band of Nigeria, One World Band of the Southeast, One World Band of Aba, One World Band of uh, Nicha, uh, World World Band of Uweri, and all the surrounding towns of the Southeast, One World Band of Ibadan, every part of the country. You know why? Because this is a band, if you, if you, if you grew up in 80s, 70s, 80s, you remember when you talk of um, the higher institutions of Nigeria, they had very, very strong social life. Very strong social life. Very strong social clubs, you know, in Ibadan. Uh, they had the Sigma Club in Ife. You had the Club Totmon, Scala Club. Very strong, very disciplined uh, groups or gathering of young guys, disciplined people, you know. So this band, One World, was in fact one of the standing bands that used to perform at the annual induction or annual um, ceremony put together by the Sigma Club of University of Ibadan. That is um, to tell you the extent or the popularity of this band we are talking about today, we are featuring today. They played so many venues across the country. I know they played in my hometown venue, in my, can I call it my area venue in Uyo, my own town, Uyo. They played at Independence Hall. If you go back to, uh, to uh, the initial episodes of uh, Music in My Ears, I spoke about Independence Hall because this is basically where we grew up. This is basically where some of these ideas about this podcast started from because we notice the movement, we notice the shows, we observe the events, even though we were little kids, we knew things were happening. We knew boxing events were taking place at Independence, Independence Hall. We knew that musical performances were taking place at Independence Hall. We knew that uh, drama or acting or whatever was taking place at Independence Hall. Independence Hall is located just at the intersection of my street and a back road in New York. For those of you that are conversant in, uh, with that area, so this is um, kind of the basis for uh, kind of the background where the passion for music started for me as a person, you know. So uh, this band I'm of a certainty performed at Independence Hall. Say, if I don't, you a band the rest. That's to tell you how uh, versatile and how widely the band travel over the time they existed. So um, basically, uh, we are talking of members. Like I said, most of the members were pulled out from the strangers. And the Hoffner uh, happens to have been, let me say, the right hand man of Bob Miga in the strangers. So they had to leave. He left with uh, Sam Wilifang Eze, Dolph Remedebo, uh, 
Samuel K. Matthew, Gabozani, and the rest. Then you added Tony Francis, added Clement Amechi to form one world. Clement Amechi happens to later transit into reggae with the group, a group of two. Austin King, Clement Amechi, that made up the group or the duo, the reggae duo we knew as Free World in the late, very, very late, tail end of the 80s. You know, they came, in fact, probably the last uh, standing strong reggae uh, band Nigeria had. So, Clement uh, Mechi started from One World, gradually moving into reggae music with the band. So that's um, just about the, the, the members of One World. But let's, um, at this stage, bring in another song by the band. And this time around, we are talking of the director of the first album released by the band. So stay tuned. When we come back, we'll try to look at the discography uh, of the band. Probably run, uh, wrap things up at that point. Thank you for staying tuned. Peace. Okay, thank you so much for joining us on this episode where we are featuring the One World Band of Nigeria, the Afro-Funk Psychedelic Rock Band. They actually came with um, a kind of mellow kind of sound, um, not so hard like uh, if you listen to the Funkies and the other band. Their music, try to listen, it sounds a bit mellow, you know. So, but uh, basically they, they had about four or five albums through their life, uh, through their time as a band. Uh, they had this uh, Victory album in 1975. That's what, um, you know, launched them into prominence. They had tracks like Look at the Walk, had Freedom, My Sadness. They also had um, um, you know, some other sounds coming off the album, you know. Good album, which to me seems to be my favorite of all the albums, 1975. Then in 1976, they had the movement of peace. That had uh, that one was uh, made in Kenya. Kenya, maybe the you know um, EMI was uh, it's a multinational company, so they could make their albums in any part of the world. So we had the movement of peace, and in this particular album, uh, this name popped up, and the name is Odion Iroche for. Uh, music stu uh, history students. This man, Odion Roger, actually deserves a national award along with people like Paula Kalonu, you know, along with uh, people like J uh, Jack Solo, mm? Tony Okoroji, Konotelis, also late Don Konotelis, the Cameroonian, Fabi was a Cameroonian, you know. These are people that uh, made the music, the producers. Odion Roger, for instance, across so many recordings in Nigeria. If you talk about Chris Okoti, you know, the man behind the music, Odioni Roger. Talk of uh, Felix Liberty and the rest, you know that uh, GDOB, you would know that Jack Solo was the main man behind his music. You know, so there are several, and the most of this band of the early 70s, you can, um, you can, you can see that a name like Pala Kalono featured so prominently in the early recordings. These guys actually deserve an award. Maybe I will relate it to the modern times. So if you are talking of somebody like Don Jassy, you could you could regard um, Pala Kalono like a Don Jassy of the um, Afro funk era. You know, if you talk of the pop, you definitely have to pick a Lemmy Jackson as the Don Jassy of you know, of, of the pop era of Nigerian music, and so on and so forth. So that's just um, an aside, but we are talking of one world band right now. The first album was uh, actually produced by one Mr. C. Mwangu, you know. So um, after 1976, they released another album, another album in 19... I think that, that should have been 1978 or there about 1977, they released Rejoice, you know. Then in 1978, they had um, Mama and Papa. 
that was the title of the album. But at this point, they made a switch. They actually switched from the Afro funk thing to reggae. So some of these things needs to be examined and questioned. What could have led to this switch? Was it as a result of the waning popularity of the Afro funk, or was it as a result of the ban uh, undergoing a kind of transition or trying to move with the tide, or probably they were now waning in popularity and they uh, decided to flow with what was coming up? Because immediately after, the reggae didn't really make um, that strong impact till the middle 80s. Uh, where it kind of ran side by side with the Nigerian pop music time. But um, some bands have started coming up, probably uh, when we talk of um, Cloud 7, you know, Clive Davis, Cloud 7. And they're making waves, probably that could have prompted the band uh, switching to reggae for their uh, uh, Mama and Papa album of 1978. Actually, some school of thought feel that their popularity was going down. Probably they've priced themselves out of the market because, you know, at the beginning of this episode, I've said that they were elitist in nature, you know, and other bands were springing up. Um, Sweet Breeze was hot on their heels, and Sweet Breeze came with such um, a force, very popular. Still today, Sweet Breeze still stands the test of the time. Their music is still on rotation everywhere. So when you had a competition coming up that way, probably that could have led to the band, you know, switching into reggae, trying to revive their career. We have seen uh, several of those things happening in, in that period. Uh, but then, that's just music. So at the same time, you see had of Johnny Roche featuring as a producer on that uh, very album. Then again, same, uh, that particular album, another name that made so much impact in Nigerian music history in terms of um, cassette sleeve, album sleeve, uh, production and printing, post featured in that album. So some of this, we, we try to mention those things so that it, uh, they'll remain for people to get to know. Remember post soon. In the 80s, almost all the cassette sleeves of this world made in Nigeria was made by Potsdam. You know? So, we have to remember these things because if we don't, they will be lost in uh, history. You know? So, Potsdam features as the, as the um, print, printer of the sleeves of the cassettes of the album. So, that's that. Then, um, in 1978, again, uh, one world released what could be their that what would be their last album, and that album was um, titled "Baby Is Mine." The baby is mine. So they also feature a lot of instrumentals on their recording. Almost all almost all the bands had all the albums had an instrumental track to it. Sometimes very jazzy stuff. You know, so just to show the dexterity, the the, the versatility of the band. You know. So that was it. Uh, at this time, the band equally has started going down because other bands have started coming off. Like as bands like Sweet Breeze were really really hot in the Lagos scene. You had the Ophegas of this world. Uh, the BLO, BLO were coming up strong too in Lagos. Mono Mono and the rest. So. Gradually, um, the era of One World uh, came to a halt with that last album. At the same time, um, I understand that the group remained in some things around Port Harcourt, have a studio and stuff like that. And they actually took part in the event that was organized for the Stars of the Past by the Anambra State Government in 1997. They featured in the shows. Um, I'm so delighted to have been able to watch them perform. Uh, these are people who only knew, hear, used to hear about, but at least we saw them perform uh, live. And in 2018, we discovered uh, they lost one of their key uh, members, Stanwell Matthew, 
passed on. So I think uh, most other members are still doing one or two things, uh, mainly around the Portacourt area. So that's it for the band One Wall. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, wherever you meet us, this is my ears. Kindly click the subscribe or like button. Help us to grow, help us to do well. Thank you once again for being with us. We dedicate it to our viewers across the world. When I say across the world, it's across the world. Our viewers and listeners across the world. Thank you so much. From Australia, New Zealand, Romania, Germany, UK, US, South Africa. Appreciate. Thank you. Until we come again with another episode of Music in My Ears. Peace.